The PowerPoint is not overpower you. And uh, let me talk with you uh, how to start on a winning stage. How, will, how about start about selling? Which is easy to fail, right? Somewhere in life you're gonna fail. Maybe you here come here for the first time, you probably uh, fail out of part of your life and you want to find some way. But uh, when people fail, especially that thing doesn't go your way, immediately you probably gotta go to the next stage and you start to plan. Maybe you plan about your education, your background, maybe you don't you are not lucky like other people, you are, don't know too many people. Or maybe you're in the business, you start blaming others. Maybe your client is not a, you don't join the right guy. Or you uh, blame your people. Why everybody get the right guy? Why I always end up with this guy? <laughs> And you uh, run out of your line and downline to blame them. You probably blame them. Transamerica. <laughs> I wish they approved the policy better. You know, and uh, and you keep blaming. You know, it's a result and then the negative part of our brain. When people fail, there's some kind of chemical release and and they blame them. And the uh, after that stage, when they run out of place to plan, they run to another dangerous stage called doubt. Because you don't trust anything anymore. You think everything in the, in the gray area, the dark cloud. So you're going to doubt everything. You start doubting uh, your client, you, you doubt more about your teammate, you doubt about if you the next one who join you, gonna be the same thing like the one, the other one. You slow down recruiting, you doubt about the product. You doubt about the WFG, you doubt everything. You doubt about our company. And when you're in a state of doubt, nothing gonna stick with you. And you use be in the down zone long enough, you become like a Teflon. Nothing gonna stick to you. You become very numb and you have to develop a, a state of indifference. And once you get to that stage, you doubt long enough, Then will come a moment in your life you begin to get in another stage, you realize. You know? You realize that as much you don't like your upline, see if your upline keep moving on and he keeps smiling. He keep going on with his business. You know, you doubt about your downline, and your downline don't care. And you go home, you realize that your wife also don't care either. <laughs> <laughs> they just want to know if you win or not. <laughs> so you begin to realize that nobody cares. All the negative, all the problem, all the situation that you're facing, nothing you can do about it, and nothing people are going to do about that for you. Do you start realizing? Which is good. Because most of the time, you're so negative, you're so doubtful, you don't even know it. So you start realizing that it's not going to be the answer. Then you go to the next stage. 
begin to survive. You know the medicine? You go to work. You show up. You sit in the back. Uh, you go and make a, a few contact here and there. You, uh, you make one or two cells here and there. But you don't see yourself winning. You are in a surviving mode. And then someday, maybe like today, some of those guys who is surviving get to this place and look to somebody who he used to be like me last year, and now he won this stage. He's winning. So all of a sudden, you feel like you have some hope. So you get to this stage, there is some part that inside of you begin to come out. After all, you want to win anyway. So, so you begin to be hopeful. You may work out this direction, very hopeful. However, nothing gonna happen, happen to you until you begin to focus. Because <coughs> excited people short lived. You gotta know exactly that you focus on. You gotta have something you uh, put your head in. If you ever walk out here, uh, uh, out here at uh, this convention tomorrow, and you don't, don't, don't know what you're gonna do next, this thing is not gonna help you. So hopefully you go back and you get the focus. And yeah, I hope that you can focus long enough. I'm talking about this stage. Some of them last with you a month, some of you last year two, three months, some of you on the last to some of you maybe two days. Many of the Dao people on the Dao stage last months and year. How can it happen? Only six minutes left. <laughs> Is that true? <laughs> Especially I was, you guys talk fast, I talk slow. <laughs> I write it also, so what can I do with it? So 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 um, so so if you can focus on some goal, some direction. But you have a goal and you focus, it's not going to do anything good for you either. Until you get to this stage, become hard. I'm not just talking about just excited. There's a difference between positive and excited people. Excited people is too emotional. Positive people is strong. They look and think everything happened today to their life in a positive way. You focus, but and you excited is short lived. You focus, but you positive. It it is the 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 the, the, the longevity that provide enough fuel for you to get your job done. In fact, sometimes, if you too excited, it may not be that good for you. Be positive. Number nine. So now you focus and you're so positive, you get to the winning stage. You win. You get to that, uh, Target, you get to that promotion, you get to that things that you always wanted, the income or the thing that you set out, you win. And you know what? Number 10. After you win, you're gonna fail. <laughs> 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 if I went number 10, they have two parts. 
Part number one is you're going to be complacent. After all, you win. After so many months, long and months and hard years, that you get that promotion, you get that ring, and so on. And you got to reward yourself a little bit. You celebrate it. You see, many of you come here to this convention. And I see that you're so mad that you didn't win. But you never know what's going to happen when you win. Also, they used to say. Oh, you know the second, uh, the second, the second guy is the first loser. But for me, the number one guy is the next loser. <laughs> Because you may go down. Unless you're one of those people who, who is steadily complies, uh, complacent. You have a new vision. Chances are, it's not easy. Most winner, the biggest challenge of a of a winner of a winning team is what's in your next vision. So uh, it takes great vision. To take a leader with big vision to help the people. You see, most of your people have a dream. A dream is just wishful thinking. Vision is somebody who be able to see something so clearly and help people to achieve that dream. So many leader. When you win, or in situation that you're not winning, but you don't have that vision that you where you're going to go, and also you don't have the vision for the people that are working with you. You see, most of the people they just they want to win, they're dreaming, but they never have that vision. So, so it's great to have a vision, uh, to have a dream, but much better to have the vision. Just like it's great to be excited, that's a lot better if you're positive. However, so so I want to tell you, the winning game is so so elusive. You win and you lose. Sometimes you get positive. You're about to win, and you hang around the wrong crowd. You go back to the doubt stage. Many of you never win because somehow your destiny is so bad that you run to a group of people. Maybe today you can go to a coffee shop and you hang around some companion. Somebody will have a different way to talk about different thing, and you're about to focus, and you lost your focus. Or somebody about planning some part about something, and you have hang around those people. So some of you is right now have a little hope, but tomorrow you go home, somebody somebody gonna rain on your parade, and you go back to the down state. Or somebody going to go here when you are focused, and and something happen three days from now, and you so mad, and you blame somebody else. So I, this is not a winning stage. I call it the rubber band of success. In fact, many times you find yourself and your people sometimes like this, sometimes like this, 
Sometimes they are yo, 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 yo. Sometimes they are hot, <laughs> sometimes they are cold. And that's why they can't win. Or if they ever win, they're going to lose. And many people lose for so long, they never come back. You see, this business is very, very simple. Very simple. But it's not about the business. You know, the whole world coming out and says do 3 feet 30, and the other one do 3 feet 30, life will be simple. But it's, but it's not that easy. Because you never know. In fact, most losers don't even know why they lose. They don't know what stage they are in. One of the most negative people always think they are positive. <laughs> <laughs> the guy who is doubtful always act outside like they are pretty strong, very awesome. But actually, deep in their heart, he doesn't believe what he say or she say. They, they say they, they do something, they believe it to uh, our business, yet they don't, the action doesn't follow. When they say that we got to go help people, but they didn't go out of your uh, tonight. So, so there is a conflict it's within that inside of the winning and losing mind. And until the, uh, the day they settle, until the day they, the doctor know that you are a doubter. If you are a doubter, you gotta know that you are a doubter, so you gotta try to realize something very quickly. And if for those of you in the survival mode, they start to get some hope, and you start to get some focus, and be positive again. And for those of you who win, don't be sleeping on your victory for too long. I see in life, I go through a lot of guys, most of those guys I know, half, when they win, they understand all these steps, they wouldn't sit here today, looking at a guy. Many guys here could be much bigger, hundred, a thousand times bigger, but they take it for granted. They thought that they are wrong. A lot of guys always say, so why you always go far? I'm scared of that when I'm winning. <laughs> See, many people, Nokia, they win for many years. Nokia keep winning and winning. They beat everybody. But they play the same game. They want to become number one. They make the best phone, the best model, everything. But you know what? The CEO of Nokia someday say, we do all the wonderful things. We are number, number one, but somehow we lose. This company, we cannot sing it and, 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 and always think that we are winning all the time. There's somebody out there. is the one that you have to pay attention to. You know, sometimes we are playing our game here, we celebrate victory here. Is that good enough? The true, true challenge is outside this thing. The other industry that we need to do. Because if we are so big, with this number of people, for the last so many years, we're still hovering about 50, 40, 50,000 people don't sleep on our victory to her. So my first challenge for you is every day try to do some reflection. Look through this magic mirror and ask it 
nearer, nearer in the world. Ask what stage of winning I'm on. <laughs> Let me show you some number. It's not for bragging, but I want something that for you to something for you to ponder. This is my number that we asked Andrew Shaw to pull out, and the latest you can pull for me is uh, 1995. We started the company in 1992. In fact, in November of 1991, but actually we come to the winter and pretty much we start in 1982. We don't have anything going on with us in 1982. We bring a few hundred people in 1982 and we have no product and we have no license. So when you have no product, you have no license, the team will wipe out most of them. By 1993, we begin to start all over again. By 1983, we have a handful of license. Because at the time, we need three licenses to do the business. So 1993, we start from zero. So by the time Andrew showed me two years later on, because the first two years we use a third party administrator who do the computer for us, when 1995, in 1993, when we have the number, I show you some zoom in. Whoa. So two years later on. And uh, this is my July 1985, about two years and a half later on, we are at this stage. Our base, our super base. And super team. So we go from zero to about two million in about two and a half years. And then, And then, uh, this is October. So, uh, October 1985, we are 2.6, right here. And then, from later on, we are 7 million. And our base is to our 100,000, but we keep cranking people, and our base to first, moving from 500 to a million and to roughly about a million. That was September 1996. But from September 1996, it took us seven, eight months later on for us to move from seven million to eight, nine, 10, 13, and 22 billion in so about seven months, eight months after that. And uh, that year we do about a million, uh, two million dollar uh, base shop. 20 into base to first and 140 million on super team. That was by September 1997. The fast forward, we have some up and down. The last 12 months, we did 395 million. And we plan to do a billion in the next week. And thank you, Daddy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I want to make a point about 
this not to brag with you. Because sometimes you play the game, you want to play the game to beat the other guy. You have to play the game with your own vision. Because to beat the other guy, what if the other guy only do this much? And you want to compete with that guy, and the day the guy do finally and you do sickly, then you feel like uh, you're the king. So what child do you play with? It takes a leader with vision to do something new. If you try to do the game, you set your goal, you are a million dollars. You most likely think that you are a high target, you land somewhere by $600,000. Why can't you do something you did so big and forget about the money? You can. There is something you can play that game, but you didn't. You choose, you sidetrack it to the other guy. See, in golf, you don't play with the other guy. Play. You play because you want to do it, but you can't. That's why vision Especially at this moment of this company, we need leader with vision for the 21st century of financial industry. We will need vision, be the leader who minus some little thing with either with a provider or another teammate with another team. We need leader with vision to do something that this country deserves. Here we are in the financial industry, we have a lot of capability to do, to change the world. We can talk about it, but when will you going to do that again? When will you go out and, 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 and grow, set yourself free and fly up and do something special with your life? Something that you come here for. You don't come here to check on those titles. Then can you play something bigger than those titles? Can you do something that you mongers that even the title don't fit into that one? Oh, well, run out of time. Okay. Is your team right now in the doubt state? Or is it because of you? You're the doubt man. Everything thrown to you, you're doubtful. And so what state are you? Secondly, let's talk about the different things. Those are the attitude issues. By the way, many of you oh, don't know how to win, and many of you don't know how to lose. You're, sorry, many of you don't know why you win, but many of you also don't know why you lose. But then some of you, you don't know how you win. The way you win is not the right way. If, if Len, Am Len Armstrong know that, how he win. So, I'd rather take number two, but win it right, than become less unfair. You follow me? Because you have to win it right to have lots of money. And when you lose, you have, how you lose? You lose badly, or you lose with dignity? You lose, but you're going to win big because you're so strong. And last, 
So where do you hear is what you are thinking. First level thinking is level one is about you. Your level thinking right now is about you. It's about you. It's about you. It's me, 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 me. And most people join business, they are level one. They think about what is in it for me? Why don't you teach me something? You want to learn about the product. You want to learn about uh, the skill, the know-how, the everything about relating to you. Or anything about you and your team. Your day consumed with about you and the people even get to you. And most of the time, the people around you either they give you excitement or mostly depressed. So that level you play. Many of you are going to play that game, you're going to be a lonely salesman or a lonely builder. You are too small. But when you, then, then you go to level two, you plus a team. When you have a team, you can think about your team, your label, and you think everything about your team. You don't think about other things. In fact, you look about competition reality, which the other thing is bad. But then you, in that game, why not just you and your team? In your team business, you think about what? Main shop, you think about all those stuff. Maybe a cash flow. And you stay in that zone long enough. You want to, so, so the first level, level one, mostly if you're good, you get to six figure income. If you're a super salesman, you make more than that. But you're still level one. You let to level two, maybe, maybe you make a major six figure income because you have a team. But you play that long enough, you must stay in major six figure income. Some of the people are saying that they're lucky to get the sale. But they're still in the level two. Some guy makes seven income, maybe it's still level one because it keeps selling. Until someday you get to level three. You're thinking you're level three. When you think about vision, mission, the system, you let you you learn how to use vision, to share your vision, to sell your vision. To make it work for you. And, and then some of you someday get to a level where you know that you can use mission. Because it's not a self skill, it's a mission. It's still inside of you and your people can build you a relentless team. And the last part of this, you gotta learn how to use a system to build your business. So you get to level three when you learn how to use your system your mission and your vision. And you're having a good student of them. But most people, when you talk about to them about mission, they say, commission. <laughs> <laughs> or they never lead to a system. They run around to see what the other guy know. What the guy have a secret. They're always looking for a guy who has a secret. And yet, after all these years, you know that there are no freaking secrets in this world. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why many of you, I hope you understand that because I'm just like, you're my young brother, my patient, I'm going to say that and not in a condescending way or whatever. I don't be here just be respectful, disrespect, but I think sometimes I'm old enough to earn to say like that. <laughs> but many of you are just always looking for the outside, short term solution. So many guys here just keep talking to stop me. I say, can you tell me one thing? I say, I'm not, I don't sell this a noodle. <laughs> I'm smart, but not smart enough. For you, 
Well, a guy like you is going to sit there and tell you a thousand things before you break your head. <laughs> so, so, don't look for outside. Look for inside of you. And begin to take ownership of your losing and take ownership of your winning. Also, begin to, take, begin to understand what level you are in. Many business people in the world out there, a small business person, always stay in a small business. But you want to be in a big business, you want to be a little restaurant owner, always about me, my kitchen. The people who live a big business, they think about organizing a big restaurant. But it will take a big mind to do something like McDonald's. So unfortunately, the small business owner always talk to the other business owner who hang around other business who try to compete with them and stay small or as a group. Some guy in the base shop game will stay there and die with your base shop game. Look, I tell people to become a big base shop, but I'm just stop right there. It's up to you to play the personal game, the base shop game, but you also have to learn yourself get to get to the high level. Okay? I'm running out of time. I'll see you later. <laughs>